Hello all. In this video, I'm going to cover the Solutions Architect Associate Learning Path. I have just cleared the AWS Certified Solutions Architect exam with an overall score of 940. And I would like to share the experience and some key tips with you all. To give you some background, AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam is one of the very first exams that was released by AWS. SAA C03 was just released on 30th of August 2022 and is an updated version of the previous SAA C02 exam. Now these are the key domains covered in the AWS Solutions Architect Certification Exam. The exam will mainly test your capability in designing secure, resilient, high-performing and cost-optimized architectures. Secure architectures cover designing solutions around access control, authentication and authorization, encryption at rest and in transit, and security best practices. Resilient architecture cover designing solutions around disaster recovery, high availability, scalability, event-driven architectures, and designing multi-tier, multi-AZ, multi-region architectures. High-performing architectures cover designing solutions around horizontal and vertical scalability, loose coupling, distributed computing, serverless applications, caching, and edge networking. Whereas cost-optimized architectures basically cover the ability to discover and measure cost and building cost-optimized solutions. Usually the questions would specify superlative terms like most secure, least cost, most resilient. So look out for the requirements before designing the solution. The exam consists of 65 multiple choice, multiple response questions that needs to be answered in 170 minutes. SAA C03 has a scaled score between 100 and 1000 and the scale score needs to pass the exam is 720. There is no negative marking, so make sure you attempt all. The associate exams are currently priced at $150 plus tax. You can get additional 30 minutes if English is your second language by requesting exam accommodations. I've included the link in my blog post. AWS exams can be taken either remotely or online. I usually prefer to take them online as it provides a lot of flexibility. I prepared for the exam for over a month and a half. A month mainly going through the online course and trying out hands-on and the last 15 days practicing the tests and looking out for my weaker areas and reading the relevant AWS documentation. I would recommend to have a consistent game plan. Take out an hour each day to go through the online course and do some hands-on exercises. I have listed down some of the resources I used, but just choose an online course and a practice test set, and you should be good to go. The AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam covers the design and architecture aspects in deep, so you must be able to visualize the architecture and even draw them out or prepare a mental picture just to understand how it would work and how different services relate to each other. I have covered out some of the topics below. Be sure to go through the links. 
AWS does keep on updating new services as the exam is updated. So please look out for the updated documentation. Understand Virtual Private Cloud or VPC and its components that include subnets, route tables, security groups and NACLs. I would recommend you set up a VPC from scratch couple of times to make sure you understand these components and the relationship between them. Internet Gateway facilitates incoming traffic to the VPC while NAT gateways and egress only gateways facilitate outgoing traffic from private instances to the internet. NAT gateways are for IPv4 and egress only gateways for IPv6 traffic. VPC endpoints, either interface or gateway, help provide private connection between VPC to supported AWS services. VPN and Direct Connect provide connectivity between AWS and on-premises resources. CloudFront, it provides a fully managed fast CDN service that helps speed up the distribution of static, dynamic or streaming content to end users using a network called Edge Locations. CloudFront works great with S3. Global Accelerator optimizes the path to applications to keep packet loss, jitter, and latency consistently low. It also provides two static IP addresses. Route 53 provides a highly available and scalable DNS web service. Focus on the Route 53 routing policies, especially latency, weighted, and failover. Elastic load balancing provides high availability and scalability. You need to know the key differences between application load balancer and the network load balancer. Classic load balancer is not covered anymore in the exams. Gateway Load Balancer helps deploy, scale and manage virtual firewalls like IDS, IPS and deep packet inspection systems. Understand Identity and Access Management or IAM. Make sure you know IAM security best practices, especially in terms of least privilege. IAM rules provide permissions that are not associated with a particular user, group or service and are intended to be assumed by anyone who needs it. Make sure to use them with your EC2 instances or Lambda functions. KMS KMS provides key management service for encryption at rest. It does not support encryption in transit. Use Amazon Certificate Manager, ACM, to provision SSL certificates for encryption in transit. AWS WAF, Web Access Firewall, provides protection against cross-site scripting and SQL injection attacks. AWS Shield provides managed DDoS protection. Guard Duty provides managed threat detection service and provides malware protection. Amazon Inspector is a vulnerability management service that continuously scans the AWS workloads for vulnerabilities. AWS Secret Manager helps protect secrets and supports automatic secret rotation for services like RDS, DocumentDB. Understand various storage options like S3, Elastic Block Store, Instant Store, EFS, Glacier, 
FSX and what are the use cases and anti-patterns for each. Instance Store and Elastic Block Store provides block storage for EC2 instances. While Instance Store is ephemeral, Elastic Block Store is persistent. S3 provides object storage. Exam covers various S3 features like encryption at rest and in transit, S3 versioning, pre-signed URLs, cores, transfer acceleration, and the event notifications. Glacier provides low-cost archival solution. EFS provides a simple, fully managed, scalable, serverless, cost-optimized file storage for use with AWS Cloud and on-premises resources. AWS Transfer Family provides a secure transfer service that helps transfer files into and out of AWS storage services using FTP, SFTP, and FTPS protocol. Elastic Compute Cloud or EC2 provides compute for applications in AWS. The exam covers various EC2 features like instance purchase types and placement groups. Be sure you are able to select between reserved, on-demand and spot instance purchase types. Auto scaling with load balancer helps in building highly available and scalable applications. Auto scaling helps applications scale as per the demand and load balancer allows the incoming traffic to be distributed automatically across multiple healthy EC2 instances, which can span across multiple AZs. AWS Lambda provides serverless applications. Understand relational and NoSQL data storage options which include RDS, DynamoDB, and Aurora with their use cases. RDS provides relational database. Remember, read replicas help in scalability, while multi-AZ provides high availability and fault tolerance. DynamoDB provides low latency performant key value NoSQL store. Exam does cover DynamoDB features like DynamoDB Time to Live or TTL, DynamoDB Accelerator for caching. Elastic Cache provides Redis and Memcached for caching and improving application performance. Be sure to know other integration management and governance tools. Simple Queue Service or SQS as a messaging service and Simple Notification Service as the PubSub service. Understand the fan out pattern for the Simple Notification Service. You can use CloudForge for monitoring and logs and cloud trail for auditing. Cloud formation can be used as an infrastructure as a service and it provides infrastructure automation. Make sure you are relaxed and get some good night's sleep. Make sure you reach early or log in early depending upon whether you are taking the exam remotely or online. If you are taking the test online, please check in early as the online verification process does take some time and usually there are glitches. Also, I prefer to use passport for my identification. Make sure your desk is clear you're not wearing any hand watches, phones are away, 
and nobody can enter the room. Remember, you cannot take the test if you turn up for the test for over 30 minutes after the test time. That's it. I hope this will help you in your certification and AWS journey. All the best. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. For any feedback, please leave a comment. To see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.